Good morning. Happy Friday to everybody. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We're in a new book today. We're going to be doing 2 Thessalonians. So we're thankful for you joining us and I'm here with Haley again as uh, she's uh, getting up and at him before going into the campus, maybe do some work over there. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe remotely work from home. Yeah. <laughs> That's the other option. A lot of people remotely working from wherever, from home places. So I um, wanted to let you know that uh, we're going to be uh, having services again indoors uh, at goodshepherdsc.org. You can uh, see the details. We have an 8 a.m. Uh, traditional service and a 10.30 a.m. service, so you're welcome to join us if you'd like for that. And also all the devotions, again, are you can find them on that website. And um, if you have any questions or prayer requests, Pastor B. Spang at Comcast.net. Welcome to send in your prayer request. So thank you again on this Friday for joining us. It's crisp and cold outside. That it is. <laughs> very, very cold. So um, we're going to be, in, again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, kicking that off. And Kaylee's going to read that for us. It's a short chapter, so she got the whole thing. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and the love every one of you has ever has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about our perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result, you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus. They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of his power on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people and to be marveled at among all those who have believed. This includes you because you believed our testimony to you. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our Lord and Jesus Christ. All right. Let's uh, pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day you blessed us with and for a warm fireplace on a cold, cold day. We're thankful for your presence. We pray that your spirit would lead us and guide us now to um, gain insight into what you would have applied to our life um, from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. And um, that as we live out this day, we would live it as a reflection of the grace and love that you have for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, here they are. Uh, it's a Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Uh, so Silas uh, goes on Paul with Paul on his second and third missionary journeys. Uh, it was Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey. And if you remember, there was a falling out between uh, Paul and Barnabas because um, Barnabas' cousin Mark had bailed on them in the middle of the, the missionary journey. Maybe he got... Uh, there, he was, I, we don't know exactly why, but he did, he did bail on them. And so uh, Barnabas wanted to take Mark along on the second missionary journey, and Paul's like, no, yeah, that, that didn't work out. So we're, we're not doing it. So they kind of split and went their different ways. And so Silas is now uh, on missionary journeys. But there is reconciliation, you learn uh, later on in some of, the, some of the letters that Paul writes between uh, the Apostle Paul and Mark. And Mark becomes the author of one of the Gospels. So, pretty neat thing. So, whatever was going on, <clears throat> who can blame, you know, he might have been young at the time, 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you went on a missionary journey and you got uh, flogged, would you be like uh, signing up for the next missionary journey? Might be hesitant. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be high on your uh, yeah. your priority list there, but um, so there, he's committed though, and he there is reconciliation. Uh, okay, so I like um, right off the bat the mark, really the mark of the just the kind of marks of the church. Uh, verse 3, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more, and your love, and, and the love every one of you has for each other is increasing. So that's really one of the marks of the church, that uh, our faith would grow, but it's not just a faith that's internalized like a private thing, and, and you just kind of live in your own life. It's manifest in the way that we live our life, and increasing care uh, and concern and love for each, love for each other. Now that's kind of a uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of a little bit of a challenge uh, for us here in State College because many people, at our church, our local congregation, we know are only going to be here temporarily, right? You, you probably you probably put it in, fit into that category. So I think it's it's important for us to see where God has placed us for that moment of time and not just saying, okay, I need to just get through a couple years for my master's or my four or five years for my PhD or whatever it is, and I'm going to move on with the next phase of my life. But no, this is where God has placed you right now. And also, really, for those in the congregation to say, this is where God has placed you as well for right now and that um, we should be caring for each other. Uh, so I think that's a... You know, it can be a little bit of a challenge because my guess is you don't really consider look at State College as your home. I mean, is that is that would that be a fair yeah. statement? Yeah. It's like a temporary thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a you almost have to be intentional about saying how am I going to care for people when I'm here for the and not just look at it as like well I'm just kind of kind of passing through, mm -hmm. kind of riding into town and riding off <laughs> in there. So. Um, but that's one of the marks of the church, is that you're, you're encouraging each other to grow in our faith, and our love for each other is increasing. Um, and in the midst of that, they also have perseverance because of persecution. And then he turns from that and says, okay, we understand what you're going through. Jesus is going to return again someday, or, you know, your life is going to end at some point, some point. And those who are persecuting will be punished. Uh, those who are rejecting and are causing your suffering uh, are going to be punished. But even that's up to the Lord, because what does Jesus say about our enemies, how we should treat our enemies? He says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. So our desire should not be, oh, uh, you know, incinerate them God <laughs> right? our, our, our desire should be that they would turn to, to God uh, what is it uh, when when they were going through Samaria and uh, some of the villages didn't welcome them when Jesus and his disciples were going through there James and John said hey should we call down fire from heaven <laughs> and incinerate the village <laughs> and Jesus was like no. <laughs> well, I don't know if Jesus did that. Right. Okay. That's what I would have done. <laughs> How long have you been with me? And you, you, didn't get the, you didn't get the teaching right in there. So, so uh, that's our, our prayer and our uh, emphasis should be that people should, would turn to the Lord. Right. In there. So, but yeah. that, um, you know, how good, how good are you, Haley? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot here. When somebody's mean to you, and nasty to you to really care for them. It can be hard. <laughs> Test your patience a little. <clears throat> Do you find yourself like praying for them? Well, Lord, please send a bus to run them over. No. That's not yeah. my first thought. <laughs> 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 to pray for them, uh, the, the best would be in their life. I mean, that's, that's a hard. I can't do that in my own strength. Uh, you're probably nicer than I am, but I, I can't do that in my own strength. I need the strength of the Lord to get past my own thoughts and saying, man, I can't stand this person, you know, and to really try to care for them. It's really hard. Um, 
It's, in fact, I would say, for me, it's impossible unless uh, it's empowered by God, by the Spirit. <clears throat> so, um, and he calls, he says, you know, there is going kind of to be a time when Jesus does return, and that's the end. And there is a place of eternal separation from God for those who have rejected Jesus and said, I don't want to be a part of your kingdom. I don't want to be. So God says, okay, your will be done. Uh, and so he's, he's allowing their will to be done. They want to be removed. They're going to be removed forever from his presence. And that's what we call hell. I mean, separation from God. Um, so he says, with this in mind, verse 11, we constantly pray for you, uh, that our God may count you worthy of his calling, and by his power he may fulfill every good purpose. So you, you see, again, it's not by your own power. It's by his power that you fulfill every good purpose of yours and act prompted by your faith. Um, we pray this so the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, so that our lives and the way that we live our life becomes a witness to who Jesus is. And it's not just uh, living that, because then somebody will say, oh, you know, why did you do what he did? Well, you know, I care for you, but I also have been forgiven so much in my life that this is how I, um, I want to live as a reflection of what Jesus has done for me. So it gives an opportunity for us to, to glorify what Jesus has done in our life. Uh, and he says, and, in, in, um, and you and him according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's grace. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's given to you. It's given to me as a gift. I don't earn it. I don't deserve it. You don't get a special dispensation because you're a pastor. You don't get a special dispensation because you're uh, working on an advanced degree in chemistry. None of that. You know, we're all even. And the reason we're all even is because Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, the way that you, what you struggle with is going to be different than what I struggle with. It's going to be different than what Matt struggles with out there. I'm going to pick on Matt, even though he's not even in the video. <laughs> in fact, let, let's, just, let's just talk about Matt. Let's just talk about what he struggles with. He's, he's over there. He's going, to, he's going to get me after this video. <laughs> so, whatever... whatever uh, we struggle with is unique to our to ourselves, but all of us are equal in a sense that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are freely justified on account of what Jesus has done. So that's kind of the great equalizer for all of us. None of us can stand before God and say, "Oh, look at look at this! Uh, how great I did!" And uh, we want to play that game and start comparing ourselves and say, uh, "You know, uh, hey, I do better than that person over there." But that's not the standard <laughs> at all. So anything else that sticks out for you from this? Um, he comes, when Jesus comes in verse 9, he comes in the majesty of his power. He doesn't come as a babe in a manger. He comes in power the second time. So he comes as a helpless babe the first time. Right. Second time he comes in power. Yeah. Anything else that kind of like you looked at and like, hmm, oh, you know about that? That uh, last verse, 12, it's, Again, a constant reminder that the good things that I do or accomplishments that I reach aren't my own. They are God working through me. Nice. Serves as a nice reminder. Yeah. That we always need. For sure. That's great in there. So the matter, like, we call that our, like, vocation. So God can work through you in your vocation. I think sometimes people, like, see that hard, hard to see at first. Um... But God can use your vocation as a student right now uh, to be glorified um, in, in and through your life. And uh, so it doesn't matter what our vocation is, as long as it's not like a vocation that's uh, <laughs> against the, law, the will of God, right? So, uh, but, uh, yeah, so if you're, you're going to be a, like a hitman for the mafia, and you oh, say, that's my, that's my vocation, is... Uh, uh, Haley the hitman for the Vendor Ah, uh, yes. No, <laughs> probably that one wouldn't be one that you glorify God with. But yeah. you can glorify God through being a student, working a master's degree in, in, in chemistry, all of that. So that's a good point in there. All right, so uh, we're so thankful that, again, you joined us. And, uh, again, we'll have 
Worship services, goodshepherdsc.org, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. You're welcome to join us if you're in the State College area. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, the blessings of life, for the warmth of your grace and mercy in our life, for the how you reach out to us and love us and care for us. And uh, you are so patient and long-suffering with us. Help us, Lord God, to see the world through the eyes of Jesus who has given everything for us, that we may have life, fullness of life, forgiveness, and, and, a, and a heart, and a home with you that is no one can take away. That no matter what is going on in life around us, and the many people who are hurting, that maybe loved ones that are hurting right now, may your peace be with us this day, and may the light of Jesus shine through our lives. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday for 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God bless.